The early 2000s had an array of NASCAR busts. One of the most forgotten from this era is Andy Houston. Andy Houston was destined to be a NASCAR driver. He is the son of legendary NASCAR Bush Series driver Tommy Houston. He went on to win 24 races in just over 400 starts. Not only that, Andy Houston is also the cousin of former NASCAR Cup Series owner Teresa Earnhardt. Coming towards the end of his father's career, Houston was making a name for himself in late models, winning the 1994 late model track championship at Hickory Speedway. Fast forward to 1997 and he landed an opportunity to drive in the truck series for Agnington Racing. After making a few starts, he went on to race for the team full time in the series from 98 to 2000, scoring his first career win at New Hampshire during his rookie season. In 1999, he went on to score his first top 10 points finish, but 2000 would be the best season of his career. It'll be his second career win. Ford has owned Homestead Miami Super Speedway for four straight years. But guess what? Chevrolet's tightening the noose today and takes the win. This is the white. White flag. Looking to the inside, Andy Houston coming over to try and turn him and block him off. Dennis Setzer, this is going to be dangerously close. Hold on. And Houston gets the spot. Clear, 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 clear. Listen to the crowd in the background. As he comes off the final corner for the final time, Houston is going to take his third career win. Two wins, 13 top fives, 18 top tens, a pole, and an average finish of 8th place led to a 3rd place points finish. But while he was having the best season of his truck series career, simultaneously he had other aspirations to race in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. He made his Cup Series debut at Michigan that season, driving for Calwell's owned PPI Motorsports, putting together an impressive race running as high as six. But unfortunately, coming towards the end of the race, his equipment would let him down. And Andy Houston is off the pace after such an outstanding debut in his Winston Cup race. Now brings the car to the apron of the racetrack up in turns three and four. He made a total of five Cup Series starts for the team in 2000, scoring a best finish of 26 at Charlotte. It was apparent right from the very beginning that PPI Motorsports was in no position to be running a second full-time team. This clip from the Homestead race of 2000 shows another NASCAR bus, Scott Pruitt, wrecking both of the PPI Motorsports cars. In 2001, PPI Motorsports' driver lineup would look a tad bit different. Not only did they sign veteran Ricky Craven to drive the 32 car full time, but they also added rookie Andy Houston to the Cup Series straight from the Truck Series to drive full time for their 96 car. With McDonald's coming over as a full time sponsor, Houston showed flashes of potential during some of his partial starts the previous season and was expected to do the same once again. It was looking very promising in the beginning. He qualified 9th in that season's Daytona 500 and ran as high up as third in the race. He even got into a little altercation with his cousin's husband, that being the legendary Dale Earnhardt, during one of the pit stops as Dale Earnhardt was basically trying to run him off the road. He was perhaps on his way to a top 10 finish in the Great American Race before getting caught up in the big one on the backstretch. And unfortunately, that kind of set the tone for the rest of his rookie season. Even though he had some moments of promise throughout the season, no matter what he did or Cal Wells did, nothing seemed to go right for this team. So Andy Houston, who's failed to qualify the last couple of races here. Well, that was, uh, we'll let the pictures tell the story. Uh, yeah, uh, that was very uncalled for. <laughs> well, let's ride with Mike Skinner. See, the 96 gets up off the bottom of the track, leaves the inside down here open. Skinner thinks he's got a shot, but you know that cat on the outside got to get down in the corner. It's over in turn two. He get three wide. Uh, they, he bobbled. See, same thing yeah, that happened bobbled. to Casey Atwood a while yeah. ago. It, it got loose over there in turn two. There's a little patch over there, a little slick place right over there. I can recall. And boy, if you hit it just right, that back end will hop out money. And at the same time, you've got a car there on your rear bumper that's taking air off your rear spore. That don't help matters any. No, and he, everybody did a really great job, and he kept that car up against that wall. Otherwise, this could have been ugly. Who has gained the most spots in the first 50 laps? Andy Houston started 34th in his first Winston Cup appearance here. He's gained 19 positions. 
Andy Houston, who was on track to have his best finish of the season, instead is walking back. Headed down into turn one here, Ward Burton up on the outside of Andy Houston. Going around the wreck car of Brett Bodine. Ward drops to the inside and gives Andy a little shot right there. And then that wasn't enough. He decided he might give him a little bit more. Boy, he hit that wall hard. He did. That slow, you know, folks, that's in slow motion, so you don't really get a good sensation of what it's like. But that's a pretty hard lick into the back straightaway wall. Bam. Talked about it in the beginning. Temper, short track, full moon. Boy, that's a shame. And it's so frustrating for that young man. And he had, a, he had a great run going. Doing a good job, and he needed a great run. The team has struggled. He, he broke something, cut a right front tire, Benny? Yeah, the right front tire went flat on the car for some reason. And when that happens, the car just veers right. There's nothing the driver can do. But you know one thing, he was very fortunate. He was running close to the yeah, wall. I was just going to say that. That's the best place to be if you're going to cut a right front tire. At that passenger side window the cars carry here at Daytona. You see that go flying out of the car when he hit the wall. It just popped that right out. He hit so hard. And there's Andy out of the car. Trouble. Andy Houston doesn't go in the middle of the field. Everybody avoids him. Andy Houston has turned his car off the racetrack at pit exit. He'll be okay. We'll stay under green. Todd Bodine will lead lap one. Not sure Andy probably broke something when that green flag dropped. Benny, I don't know, probably something in the driveline transmission. Something happened right there when the green flag dropped. It's been a bad week for Andy Houston. Earlier this week, the sponsor McDonald's announced that they would be phasing out its backing of this team after they run just seven more races including today the end of september after the race at kansas this team is all done and mcdonald's goes to be a secondary sponsor on the other car owned by cal wells on the ricky craven car yeah there you go just lost it didn't he get yep. away just broke away from him and that explains why the 12th place car collected the 23rd and on down <laughs> Rusty Wallace started back in 37th spot. This all happened in front of him. Let's ride with Rusty. Whoa, Rusty. <laughs> Almost too soon with a the throttle there, Rusty. Oh, we got trouble, trouble behind him. Andy Houston. Caution. Rusty Wallace, the leader, trying to come back around to the yellow flag. While Andy Houston brings out yellow flag number seven. Trouble, turn two. Andy Houston has crashed. Back down into traffic. Oh, that's not a good Look out. Put it in gear. Go. Caution's out. Looks like his tires are up on the right side anyway. His rookie season was a complete disaster, where in 17 starts he failed to score a single top 10 finish, had an average finish of 32.4 along with 9 DNFs along with 8 DNQs throughout the season. His final start in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series took place at that season's inaugural Kansas race. This would also be the final start for Cal Wells second PPI Motorsports entry in the Cup Series as McDonald's decided to pull their funding from the team during the summer. Andy Houston wound up finishing 18th, but flirted with the top 10 for some of the race. So while Andy Houston did have some moments from his rookie season that left you scratching your head, it's totally unfair to pin it all on him. This is a much similar case to other NASCAR busts such as Scott Wimmer and Scott Riggs, drivers who showed potential in the lower series but were picked up by lousy cup teams. The following season, he was tapped by Herzog Jackson Motorsports to drive full-time for them replacing Jimmy Johnson. But after the first three starts of 2002 with a best finish of ninth at Daytona, the team decided to go in a different direction, signing Ty Bodine for the rest of the season. After making a few starts here and there for Billy Ballou and Jim Smith in the NASCAR Truck Series, he was signed to drive full-time for Jim Smith in 2004, 
Unfortunately, it didn't last very long. After only scoring three top 10s and 15 starts, he was let go and bounced around multiple truck teams for the rest of 2004. He made his final NASCAR Truck Series start in 2005 at the age of 34 and after that, decided to call a quits as a driver. Even though he wasn't driving anymore, his career in NASCAR was far from over. Since retiring from driving, Houston has worked as a spotter for multiple drivers, first working for Richard Childress Racing spotting for Austin Dillon in the Xfinity Series during the early 2010s, then moving up to the NASCAR Cup Series spotting him for multiple seasons. After 2019, he left both Austin Dillon and Richard Childress Racing to go spot for Cole Custer and Stuart Haas Racing, helping Cole Custer score his first and only career Cup Series win as of this upload at Kentucky in 2020. Andy Houston's NASCAR career as a driver, in my opinion, is one of bad timing. He was someone who showed flashes of potential in the lower series and also in some of his select Cup Series starts. But with only a handful of Bush Series starts up to that point, perhaps racing in the NASCAR Bush Series at first would have helped in his development. It also didn't help that he clearly wasn't the priority over at PPI Motorsports. Due to all these factors, you technically have to call him a NASCAR bust, but let it be known that it's not entirely his fault. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.